Uh, hey, Internet. Hey, guys. Uh, it's time for Movies Alone. Together. together. There we go. We uh, just got out of seeing Star Wars, episode, uh, what is this, eight? Uh, the uh, quest yeah. for yeah. more money. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah. Oh, uh, The Last Jedi. Okay, so let's let's start, because this is Star Wars, and yeah. this is a big deal. Yeah. Let's do a little spoiler free. Okay. Okay, let's recap the first uh, seven movies. Okay, so <laughs> Once a long time, time ago. <laughs> spinning is a good trick. Spinning is a good trick. Let's try that. Um, <laughs> no, so spoiler free, uh, this is my second time seeing it, and I loved it the first time. I enjoyed it just as much, maybe even a little bit more the second time, which rarely ever happens for Mark. Mm -hmm. Craig? I, I, I thought overall it was a good movie. It, it was... It was a long movie. I yes. feel like yes. they could have cut out like 40 minutes of stuff. There was a part where I thought, oh, okay, it's wrapping up. And then it went on for 40 more minutes. Um, like it would have been a good two hour, 15 minute movie. Oh, that's a fair critique. Yeah, it, 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 it was a little long. I'm not, I didn't care much for it. It's not, I'm not saying it's necessarily like bad, mm -hmm. but it didn't feel like Star Wars. Really? Yeah. I felt the exact opposite because... Um, Star Wars, uh, the, the Force Awakened felt like what someone thought Star Wars was. Yes. But they, uh, but like it didn't have the feel like th with the cinematography and the writing and stuff. This one, I really felt had the atmosphere and the writing down to where it sounded and looked and felt like a Star Wars movie, not just saying like, oh, you're whipping dudes with your stick and stuff and like weird lines like that in Force Awakened where it's like no one would ever say that in the Star Wars universe. And like, oh, who talks first? Do I talk first? Do you talk first? Like, very 2016 line, or but, 2015 right. lines. But it, that's still in this movie. It, yeah, was, Only one moment. No, and it's, no. Oh, a lot of the okay. humor, I felt, okay. was... Humor was not great, but it was few and far between, and it, if the humor wasn't there, this movie would be depressing as fuck. I have to agree that it was few and far. Like, it was, like, they spaced them out well yes. enough where I yeah, wasn't, like, 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 in Thor, where I was, like... Uh, right. Yeah. It, it, the the jokes were paced pretty well, um, but a lot of them just they felt out of place. Still, like I you mean, can have a bit there, you can have a gag there, but I don't know. Some of it felt out of character and, I, and, and not not like Star Wars. Okay, I'm gonna challenge you on this and say go back and watch the original trilogy because there are a lot of gags that one fall flat on their face and two feel like they don't belong with the rest of the film. Now, granted, uh, through editing, there were some gags that were, like, so unfunny and you could honestly cut them from the movie mm -hmm. and it wouldn't change the scene at all. Yeah. Um, which, I mean, the gags that aren't funny in the original trilogy, uh, you can't cut them out. Like, they're still part right. of the scene and stuff. And so, like, I'll give you... Yeah. Like, they still build the characters, where in this, a lot right. of the humor... Was it, just sort of. It um, felt like, oh, hey okay, guys, it's 2017. Let's make this joke. It's like it's, it, it felt like it's very. It in was this sort time. of. Okay, it was sort of. I don't, not classic. I don't think Kylo Ren called anyone a special snowflake and then said fake no, news. No, <laughs> but it doesn't feel. Yeah, like, that was uh, Hux. Yeah, Husk was like fake news. The rebels aren't cool. <laughs> Even when you had the a, first uh, order had the largest assembly ever. You have to believe me. I didn't support that pedophile. What do you mean there's video of me doing that yesterday? <laughs> Topical jokes, I'm Hashtag sorry. not my supreme leader. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I can't believe the First Order destroyed net neutrality. <laughs> okay. L listen, I'm just saying, I think both sides are to blame with the First Order and the Rebels. And, and, and honestly... If there are bad think, people on both sides. I think the First Order has the right to say what they want to, and, and you can't just punch people for being with the First Order, you know? <laughs> that, Luke is a crook. Okay. <laughs> okay, we got all of our Nazi jokes out of the way. Oh, wait, uh, wait. Because Harrison Ford wasn't here in this movie, I, I just need First Order. I hate those guys. <laughs> Okay. Nazis! <laughs> 
Okay, okay now, can, uh, I know that we said we'll do it without spoils, but, like, can we get into spoils so you can give me, like, examples of these okay. things? Okay, alright, Spoil spoilers are starting now. Yeah, spoiler time okay. live, after us giving very few details about the film, how we felt, and talking about Nazis. First five minutes of the movie, we had Poe making a, uh, yeah, your mother joke. <laughs> okay! That, that doesn't belong in Star Wars, I'm sorry. You can have a movie that has a your mother joke. Not Star Wars. His and I'm not a big Star Wars guy. Mm -hmm. Like, I enjoy the movies, but there's people out there that live and breathe Star Wars. Yes. That just, that doesn't feel like Star Wars. Okay. You wouldn't, you, you, you know, that's, that's this place and this time, and this is a galaxy. Actually, okay. long, yeah, long time on, ago in the hold galaxy. On, hold, on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Counter argument. Okay. Until the Your Mother comment, that's very much dashing rogue Han Solo shtick. Like, literally, hey, um, we're maintenance. How are you? Yes. Like, and then they threw in the your mother, and I didn't like that part right. either. Like how when Finn said, you're whipping dudes with a stick, and no one had ever said dude. So I'll give you that one line was not great. And, like, it was out of place. But, I, again, please give me more examples, because I don't think that was enough to ruin stuff. There was, uh, uh, Steve brings up a good point where... There's these things that shouldn't exist. Like Star Wars has this uh, this world that it's trying to build mm -hmm. that is n almost nothing like what we have here, right? On planet so, Earth, so they so they go to Casino Planet and everyone's and wearing like, like Earth suits and, and playing wearing, Earth and games and they're playing like craps and stuff and okay. and they have poker chips. Counter argument: Star Wars, the fucking original, New Hope. They literally just go to a bar. Where people are drinking just beer yes. and stuff. Yes. And there's just Wolfmans and Millennium Falcons and using the word hell and stuff that exists. So, like, and I can't believe I'm doing this, and this isn't a good argument, but I'm just going to bring it up. In Episode 2, Attack of the Clones, they go to a 1950s diner in space... Which is fucking stupid. Right, and guess what? Yeah, the so... The prequels are not good movies! I know, I know, but I'm just saying... Things that resemble human culture are in Star Wars. They always have been. And I didn't find the casino that distracting. Like, yeah, they're slot machines and people are wearing tuxes. But, like, that's like saying people don't have jackets in space. How dare they come up with the same idea of what a fancy garb looks like. And a lot of it was on, like, fucking aliens, so their bodies were weird. So it's like, this is what a dress would look like if she had three arms and six tits and stuff. Um, I, I, I'm not gonna really validate that with being a huge complaint. You cannot like that. Well, that's, no, I just, that's, I, I didn't, like, it wasn't a deal breaker for me. That, right. It was just something that I was like, oh, that's weird. Yeah, that's just one part of the made, the bigger complaint. I, okay, he, I'm, again, I'm gonna keep defending this one scene, because in the Star Wars mythos, honestly, with the exception of the prequels, and even then, eh, we haven't really seen the upper class. We've seen dirty beggars, rebels, and Nazis. That's the only social divide we have. So how do you immediately translate to a human audience in the human world that this is the upper class and that they're hoity-toity fucks? But we've you seen, put them in hoity-toity clothes. We've seen royalty in, in other movies. We've seen... Princess Leia, who wore a bed sheet and no bra because George Lucas said bras don't exist in space. Mm -hmm. <laughs> we saw Bail Organa from a planet that blew the fuck up and would have their own culture and, and style, and he wore a cape. And we saw people on Coruscant, which was basically space New York. We have not seen the guys from The Great Gatsby who go on yachts and bid on races. This was our first exposure to truly the 1%. So, again... How do you translate that without saying, these are the rich people? Because I like that part where it's like, oh, they're fucking scumbags. It's filled with the worst people. And I, the, the first time I saw this movie, I rolled my eyes. I said, here we go, another cantina. Oh, yeah. And it plays with my expectations and instantly shows and fucking rich people drinking champagne. Like, <laughs> I'm like, yeah, fuck the rich people. When That's, they were flying down to the planet, it looked like another desert planet, too. Yeah, like... I thought that was a great bait and switch, and I they really that, liked that. They did that a lot in this. Oh movie. my god! 
and I'm happy. Like, there were some things that I was terrified of. I'm just gonna jump ahead a bit. Like, there were so... A, a lot of this movie gets love for me because it didn't do stupid things that it easily could have, and past filmmakers would have shown no restraint and done it. Like, the second evil BB-8 showed up. I was like, oh my god, we're gonna have to watch BB-8 fight evil BB-8. <laughs> Nope, B evil BB-8 shows up, he's like, hey guys, you're idiots for just walking around in our ship. You're under arrest. And that's it. We but, never see evil BB-8 again. But then awesome. we get BB-8 um, in at and, and I refer to every R2-D2 moment ever. I know, and so, they're stupid, and yes. why are they still there? Why because we, Why do we like this franchise? I was going to say, that's the thing. <laughs> like, people, I think people are finally starting to realize that we love Star Wars. It's fun. But they're not, like, Citizen Kane. They're fucking mm. stupid. It's a universe of convenience, coincidence, and deus ex machinas. And this movie said, fuck a lot of your grand coincidence, but we'll keep the deus ex machinas for BB-8 because he sells toys. Because guess what? When Star Wars was a standalone film, they sold fucking toys like goddamn hotcakes, and then they made Empire and they sold more toys. So you know what? If I can get this dark story with nihilistic fucking Luke Skywalker talking about all the flaws of the Jedi that fans have been pointing out for years, but I have to see BB-8 hijack a fucking ATAT -AT like an Ewok, I'll take it. I'm sorry, ATST. I know someone's gonna comment that and I'm gonna fucking feel shame. Fucking, if he has to Ewok that thing to Deus Ex Machi them out of it, fine. Cause I'll take that over the alternative of squeeze me's little kid actors blowing up space stations and fucking R2-D2 fucking a hole to literally solve every problem in the original trilogy. Um, other things that... I was so scared of Porgs. I thought Porgs were gonna influence this plot more than God. I was so terrified of Porgs. They were barely in it, and like, they were literally just kind of in scenes. They didn't do anything, except for the part where Chewbacca became a vegan because he felt bad because uh. he ate Porgs. But you know what? He still killed two Porgs and cooked them with a great marinade, it looked like. And we didn't see him not eat the pork. So, you know, I'm saying Chewbacca <laughs> ate that pork. I could go for some pork. I, I, no, he <laughs> looks so, I mean, I'm so hungry, and that pork looked tasty. What is it? See, but, like, stuff like that is just there to sell toys, and that's part of that 40 minutes I'm talking yeah, about. Yeah, you could have that. You could have cut that. Cut out. Yeah, and I I agree with that, but those 40 minutes are are more Star Wars than anything else, really, which I hate to say. Like, again, the Star Wars holiday special came out before Empire Strikes Back. Can we just sit down and appreciate that? <laughs> Something made to sell fucking toys hard came out before what is considered the best Star Wars movie. Mm -hmm. So, Star Wars is always a money-cranking machine. I'm not saying that excuses it, but, like, yeah, it's gonna fucking happen. Now, um, I'm gonna talk about the one thing I don't like about the... I mean, there's a couple, like, little sprinkles that I'm not a fan of, like Poe dialogue and how Poe is literally the most unlikable character in this movie ever. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, my biggest complaint is just burying Snoke. Barry. Yeah. So in the first movie, Snoke shows up and he's a nasty man, and I'm like, this is dumb, he's just a stupid Emperor ripoff. But, you know, this movie comes along and he's like, hey Kylo Ren, here's every complaint that we read on YouTube about your character. And Kylo Ren's like, ouch, mm -hmm. that hurt, man. He's like, so, uh, find your own character. He's like, I'll do that, I'm gonna be great in this film. He's like, you, you do that, you were great in that movie where you were a priest with Spider-Man. That's a deep cut cinema joke for you fans out there. Anyway, <laughs> so fucking... Snoke kind of is cool in this movie. And he's like, oh, and I manipulate you, and I can use false lightning, and my false powers are so strong. I'm like, cool, okay, time to learn about Snoke. Oh, he's dead? Anyone? And they're like, nah, fuck Snoke. Throw him in the garbage chute, we're done. <laughs> it's Snoke's lame. Kylo Ren, number they one. <laughs> they don't know how to handle these, like, secondary characters. Yeah. They did the same thing with Captain Phasma. Okay. <laughs> can we talk about Captain no, Phasma, no, no, we Phasma can. after this? Yeah, no, I'm, I want to jump right into Captain Phasma because the first time I saw this, I was like, I was like, great. So they buried all of the OC characters from the first movie that didn't work, that people didn't like. 
But then with Phasma again, I'm like, they gave her a good fight scene. She had mm -hmm. some good dialogue with Finn, and I thought it was a nice character moment for Finn where he's finally conquered his past. He's and not he a, sees her. Yeah, I he's not a coward her. anymore. She's not this faceless, perfect monster that ruled his life. He's beyond all of it now. That's cool. And then Phasma falls into fire, and the first time I saw it, I was like, oh, great. We killed Phasma, and she was back for what, like three minutes? But then I was like... <laughs> Unless you read the comics, which I assume no moviegoer <laughs> did, um, Captain Phasma was thrown in a garbage can and then a planet blew up, and she's apparently fine in this movie. So, oh yeah, Captain Phasma's totally dead because she fell into a pit of fire. Excuse me for <laughs> for not believing that right away. She Wait, is was, fucking fine. Was she in a garbage can though? She, I don't know. No, she so was wait, not. In the comics, they go over her not dying. Yeah, in... she she gets out of a garbage can. Oh, okay. She gets on a spaceship. Not dying in fire. Oh no no no! Okay. I'm saying in the original, there's a comic book saying how she survived Starkiller Base, and then how like she's like, hey guys, uh, it wasn't me who let down the shield and betrayed our cause. It was Jimmy, and Jimmy's like, what the fuck? And then they <laughs> kill Jimmy, and they're like, Captain Phasma, we're so glad you didn't betray us. And I'm like, oh okay, that's cool. I wish that was in the movie. And then like, so yeah. I'm not convinced Captain Phasma dead. She's just gonna show up and but give she it. would be she so wasn't in, cheap to do that. In, she I wasn't know. in the garbage can this time though. Yeah. What if there's a garbage can at the bottom of that fire pit? That's possible. That is possible. Okay. I, I rescind my they, my they, statement. Metal okay. garbage cans now, are I, very I, resilient. I, I'm I'm trying to be really serious because I actually love this movie and I'm bringing up like actual critical things. So let's drop the garbage pan. Okay. Bit for a second. You got it. And fucking like. Yeah, Phasma was underused, and there were a lot of moments where she could have just been there. Like, did sniveling Gingerman have to be there every time? No, it could have been Phasma in a couple scenes. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's just they didn't, like, it's a, a second movie in a row where they're just not... Utilizing characters. Yeah. And I know the get, I get the joke. She's Boba Fett, and Boba Fett got no character development. I, I, ha, ha, ha. Let's be better than that. I know we're new. Yeah, it's, it's you, new movies. You you could have and put like, her in in a in a lot of the scenes where we had commander hugs. Yeah, and uh, hugs and kisses. Yes, but but like for for these minor grievances, if you have any other like so, big problems. Like, so um, yes, my I'm gonna go, I'm gonna I'm gonna say my biggest problem. I want to hear biggest problem. The thing I hit me. hate it in this Give movie. It to me. Why the fuck? Ugh. Didn't purple-haired lady tell Poe the plan? Yes. Why the fuck didn't she just say, this is the plan, don't be a fucking idiot? Person who is, is well-known for being a fucking idiot. Okay. I mean, the she entire, doesn't have to... The last 40, 40 minutes of the movie is caused because she didn't tell Poe the plan. Okay. I will not put up with characters being incompetent. Okay, okay. The, in, she didn't incompetent. You said confident. You you can't put up with characters. I can't put up with characters being incompetent. Yeah, because that is of what like I meant. chain of command, she doesn't have to tell him anything. And that's very military, that's, which is stupid, and I hate the military for that, but like she doesn't have to explain. It, and honestly But this is a character who is well known for being a fucking idiot and flying off the handle. I know, except it's one guy. So like the fact that he started a mutiny like just off screen was kind of dumb, but like like, I, I, for Purple Hair Lady, it's like, listen, last time we told you fucking anything, Poe, you got most of our shit destroyed, including our bombers. So, you know what? I'm not going to tell you my plan I know you're going to disagree with, because then it's just going to complicate shit. But as soon as Leia told him the plan, he was like, oh, hey, that's a great idea. Because, why, why? Because Leia said it. And I know that's, uh, like, maybe I'm making excuses because or maybe he, I'm understanding. No, it's because he doesn't. Because right off the bat, he can't stand her. He, he, she's like Because an she got the job he wanted and all this. So, like, Poe, I find so unlikable. Because literally, he starts out, gets tons of people killed. And he's like, what I do wrong, guys? And then they end with, on the movie. This is my biggest problem with Poe is, oh, Ray's, Ray's n not romantically interested in Finn? How you doing? And I'm like, Poe, get the fuck out of here! <laughs> well, I think he's dating that uh, fish man that he <laughs> yeah. hugged when C-3PO oh is like, oh, that's a, that's a great friendship Dude, to get fucking, there. fucking... What did he say? My, 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 my favorite thing that happened during this movie was when they said Admiral Ackbar was dead, Steve saluted. I was like, <laughs> I was like, I was like, damn straight. I love you, Admiral.
<laughs> you will be missed. Uh, so I fucking love that moment. I wouldn't have had him like my dies. But like, <laughs> so the room blows the fuck up. And you're like, oh my god, they killed Leia this early in the movie. That's an odd choice. And mm -hmm. then she's like, y'all waited eight movies, but here it is. Using the force. I'm like, oh. And she flies back and they're playing Leia's theme. And I fucking wept the first time I saw that. I was like, dude, like this is so great to finally see Leia utilizing the force. She's not getting killed off and stuff. Like, she was a prominent character in this film, and that was awesome. Yeah, it was very, uh... Best different. part of the movie. Different. <laughs> what, okay. No, uh, that sounded like you have something to say. No, I, I thought it was like... I don't know. I didn't have anything wrong with it. it oh, okay. Just, no, it was just you it said just, different it was like just, you're like... Oh, it was just a My thing. princess Leia. <laughs> no, I wasn't like floored by it, but I mean, it was cool. I mean, okay. she's the best Disney princess, so... I believe now that they own Fox, uh, every xenomorph is the best Disney princess because the alien queen <laughs> gave birth to them. But, uh... <laughs> okay, best part of this movie, hands down, is Mark Hamill. Yeah. Oh my yeah. god. This Luke Skywalker is the best because he's not just playing Luke Skywalker. He's he was playing, playing Mark Hamill, playing... <laughs> he's playing yes. a man who's been through so Who much shit. So sick of all of your shit. He was playing <laughs> his character. Like, he wasn't playing something that... Like, you can tell it was him. Uh, like, he was directing his, his right. own character, yeah. not he, he was, somebody uh, He else. was definitely a man who was ravaged by a life of being Luke Skywalker. Yeah, and I fucking love that where he's like, he's like, Oh, because I was Luke Skywalker and the Skywalker blood and all. No. Everyone's connected to the Force. If I die, nothing is going to change. Like, it, this is just how the world is. And the hubris of the Jedi and people, like, I love it. He's like, at the height of Jedi power, they started the Empire and then they all fucking died. And he's like, and because I got cocky, I let Kylo Ren happen, which basically led to the First Order. He's like... Jedi hubris is what causes the universe's problems. So, like, that's beautiful. And then to see him go through that, when Yoda shows up, and first off, puppet Yoda, baby. I know! He's oh back, baby! It was, it was a good I choice. I actually really loved Yoda. Super spoilers! Oh, yeah, no, uh, we're, we're, in, you, we're in deep, baby. We're yo, wrist uh, deep in you, the spoilers. The, when Yoda showed up, and everything I did, I just loved that it. it was, scene that was is very perfect. Star That Wars. scene is perfect. Where he's like, was where Yoda's on. just like, dude, like, it's not books in a tree. He's like, uh -huh. yeah, and, he, and they and they wrote Yoda like original trilogy Yoda, yes. where he's just the goofiest old man yes. instead of a CGI <laughs> piece of shit doing flips around Camp Dooku. <laughs> like, oh, he's great. He's he's like when he's like, oh, I missed you, Skywalker. I was just like, he's back. My and boy. he he still calls him Young Skywalker. <laughs> hey, Yoda's like yeah. a million years old. It, it looks like, come on, I'm 86. He's like, mm, young you are. <laughs> <laughs> also, they got Frank Oz back to be Yoda, which is cool. Huh. Um, but like that, like moments like that, like even if Poe does a dumb thing, and and you know they he says Yo Mama, which he did it. It wasn't that bad, but yeah, <laughs> like moments like that are just dwarfed. By the majority of the film, which is Luke explaining the Force in a cool way to Rey. Rey understanding that it doesn't matter where she comes from. It's the, the Force is in all living things. And, like, she doesn't need to, to be someone's son or apprentice. Like, she can be herself. And that's where the true strength lies. Like, like she's the antithesis to, to Kylo Ren. Not because they're both Skywalkers, but because there's a balance in the universe. So moments like that, which make up most of this film, make this movie so beautiful to me. So yeah, I have to see beep, 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 get on a motherfucking treadmill and shoot guys. Yeah, I gotta see Paul go, how you doing? But the rest of the film is a gorgeous deconstruction of everything we know about Jedi's and the Force from seven movies finally culminating in like a beautiful response from the most trusted character Luke Skywalker. And that's that's what I got from this movie. Like nothing's perfect. And this isn't me making excuses like oh because this is good this is all right. No, there's dumb shit. Like the fact that when they run through Casino Town and then they get out and they're like, 
they're like, oh, it was worth it. And then she takes the saddle off of the last guardian. And she's like, now nah, it was worth it. I'm like, shut the fuck up. It's a llama in space. Who gives a shit? There's literally Nazis chasing your friends. So, uh, how do you think, uh, Snoke escaped from Casino Land? Because I'm Snoke? pretty sure he's a llama, man. <laughs> no, no. But put it side by side with one of those llama things and Snoke, and they're exactly the same. No, they're, na- they're the same thing. Nasty man. They, they just shaved the llama and <laughs> and put a fucking Smeagol. <laughs> Nas- <laughs> you say Smeagol because it is Andy Serkis. Yes. <laughs> but Nasty man Snoke looks like like a circumcision gone wrong on an old man's penis. The llama things look like Diet Last Guardian. But, you know, dumb Star Wars <laughs> animals are dumb. Uh, wait, what was I going to say? I'm glad they weren't tauntauns. Like, there were so many moments where they could have just been like, eh, eh, but I they know. didn't. Like, they didn't have Porg stack up to get Ray's lightsaber. Ugh, thank goodness. Oh, my God. So, because Carrie Fisher's dead, the scene where Luke and her are talking and she's mm-hmm. talking about, like, the end and stuff is, like, twice as heartbreaking and shit. Yeah. Yeah. Do you um, think it, they cut it? Like, did they have a final cut before then? Or do you think they cut it to make the impact harder for fan, like fans that know? Oh no, like, I I I I, th- I think this was like this was it. Like the, I don't think they cut to be more manipulative. <laughs> I, I could uh, I don't know if they would cut to be more manipulative, but I could. There were there was a few uh, one or two moments where I did notice there was a line that I feel like Carrie Fisher was supposed to say, but then they cut. To someone else, like they, they didn't. Because they probably she, had a bad take, and yeah, then she died. and then she couldn't, yeah, uh, dub her line again. Yeah, um, like, and even some scenes when like Carrie Fisher's wearing a scarf and stuff. Like, I'm like, I'm sure that's someone else. Yeah, and like they, they CGI'd her. But that, that's fine. Like, uh, I mean, they did it in Rogue One. Yeah, well, they said they weren't going to CGI Carrie Fisher yeah. into the other movies, thank God. I just hope they don't give me, like, a, oh, yeah, like, a General Leia died in her sleep or something. Mm. Like, I'm okay with her just not showing up again, you yeah. know? Yeah. Um, hmm. I really, like, I guess maybe in the next movie he'll show up or something, but, like, uh, not Tim Curry, uh, the guy who helped them do the hack and stuff. Like oh, I, 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 no, I liked not. his character because it was it was it was testing Finn, which okay I hated Finn in Force Awakens. I hated him. He sucked. Mm. This movie made me like Finn. Which I was like great. I, I did like him. I liked Adventures of Finn and Asian Girl. Rose. Rose. Yes, Rose. I I, I was trying to think of the flower, <laughs> and I couldn't. Petunia. <laughs> Chrysanthemum. Lily. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, I, I, I like that. That was something, uh... They had genuine chemistry and were fun. Uh, I don't really know how I feel about her kissing him at the end, but, like, that could just been, like, a, hey, I might be dead, so, yeah. Kiss, like, and he kind of reacted, like, I don't know. I might, yeah, he's I, like, I, I might I, be I, gay. <laughs> that's what the internet thinks. <laughs> <laughs> and then when he sees Pogo, how you doing, he just, like, cries a single tear. <laughs> <laughs> he's like, why didn't you ask me how I was doing? Um, but yeah, I just, I, 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 I do think you're right, Mark. I think there's a lot of really good things in this movie. Like, all the stuff with Luke is great. With, I wasn't a big fan of, of, of him throwing the lightsaber over his shoulder. I thought that was a little... That was very Mark oh, yeah. Hamill, okay. I think. I love that so much because, okay, last movie ends, Luke doesn't say a word, it's just her holding out the lightsaber. Every fucking dumb bitch and jabroni Mark went to their computer, came on their keyboards, was like, what's gonna happen? So the second this movie starts, he goes, I don't fucking care. And he just throws it away. Beautiful. I feel like that wasn't... Showing right from the beginning that it's like, this isn't the Luke Skywalker that you know from the original trilogy. And, and that's... This is an old, jaded man. That's I, fine. But I would rather he just, like, drop it. I, I For some reason, just something about him throwing it over the shoulder... It was a joke that didn't land, yeah. but I feel like... I don't think it was a joke. I feel like it, was, it wasn't scripted, and Mark Hamill just did it. <laughs> yeah, I could see that. <laughs> and they're like, we're going with <laughs> Which is why it felt so natural to me. Uh, same with when he dusted off his shoulder. Oh, you know, that, that was, was a, like, yes. he, they didn't tell him to do oh, that. Yes. He just did it. And, oh, they're yeah. like, okay. and they're like, you know what, Mark? You earned it. It cost $10,000 a minute for film. 
Okay. Luke Skywalker completely showing up Kylo Ren was my favorite that was, scene okay. in the movie. Hold on. Can I talk about how cool that scene? So the first time I saw it, I'm like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. That lightsaber we just saw get ripped in half. And then it's like, oh, I'm a spooky ghost that was being projected. Mm -hmm. This time, knowing it's a spooky ghost, they fucking basically tell you it's a spooky ghost from the beginning. Because his hair, he looks like yeah. the young... Um, Not just that. They show Kylo Ren's foot brush up against the sand, and it leaves the red yes. streak. Oh, and then you, they shit. show Luke's feet, and it doesn't leave a streak. And I'm like, yo! I didn't realize that yeah, part. Yeah, right? Oh my gosh. Like, just fuck, dude! That part was really cool. Also, the chemistry between Rey and Kylo Ren is awesome. Giving them that, like, telephone call force shit was great because it allowed them to interact with each other without like sacrificing the fact that they would be like him fighting if they were actually mm -hmm. in the same room and stuff so like it allowed us to really get a sense of like how on the same page they are and the balance between them which again is the main theme of this movie is balance i think i would have liked that better and i did like it mm. i would have liked it better had Snoke not been like, oh, that was totes my goats me no i, I, but I was I, it I, totes I, my goats him I, because at the end Kylo Ren clearly saw Rey getting in the ship, and that was not two feet away from him. That was, like, miles away. And she s clearly saw him in that room. Mm -hmm. And then when the door closed, he was like, fuck. Like, maybe it... So, like, I really think Snoke was just like, oh, I'm really cool, though, guys. <laughs> like how he saw the lights, like, saw like, a lightsaber turning to yeah, an like, enemy. Yeah, he's and, like, I see like, a very vague thing. Yeah. And Kylo Ren's like, oh, yeah, see this motherfucker. <laughs> but, uh, what was I going to say? So I wish they sort of, uh, I liked the whole sound aspect of it, how they, they did that. I wish they, I don't know, it needed more to... Visual, like not visualize it, but like they visualized that whole weird mirror thing, uh, yeah. chamber of secrets. Yeah, thing. that was that felt uh, very pointless. But and then I re but, and, I direct you to Luke Skywalker in the fucking Dagobah tree. <laughs> no, no, I, I I don't. It was literally one of those moments. Yeah, no, I know that. It's just they visualized that so much, and then all they did with the telephone between... It was cutting between what, the two areas. It, yeah, it was strange. I, yeah, I, I think that could have been handled better where, like, if it showed, like, when Kylo was talking, like, Ray was, like, kind of in frame, and then, like, when, like, Ray was talking, Kylo was kind of in frame, but then, like, if it just showed the entire room, no one would be there. Like, it could have been done, but, like, again, that's that's a nitpick. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I, yeah, that's yeah. my nitpick for yeah, that. It's fine, it's fine. It's an uh, interesting uh, observation, because, like, I didn't think uh, anything of that. I just really liked the concept of that. Like, I really liked how they did it with sound, but it needed that extra little thing. Yeah. Like how uh, Kylo would hear the ocean or whatever. Oh, and, like, he, the actual, or, would go silent. actual water was transferred because the Force is magic and it's dope. Uh, uh, or, yeah. It's not, I mean, it is midichlorians, but it's just a different way of interpreting the force. Because mm. fucking Qui-Gon was a hippie. And <laughs> he was a drunk. He was. But that old drunk. So, like, uh, just uh, more things I just fucking, like, like I, make me smile. is like, at the end, when, like, Leia's like, oh, we can rebuild shit. And, like, the kyber crystal from, from Anakin's original lightsaber is the is there. Mm -hmm. And, like, it's like, oh, dude, like, I can't wait for Rey to make, like, a double blade lightsaber or some shit, like, because she uses the bow mm -hmm. staff. So, like, I think that's a natural progression. To finally, like, the destruction of that lightsaber was so beautiful because it was finally, like, like, it's over. Like, these are different people. We don't have to ride the legacy coattails mm -hmm. of some guy that's been dead forever. Parents are fucking shit, and they don't even have names. That's the best part of this movie. That was if I could frame that scene, and then and then immediately play the scene where the guy tastes the ground and goes salt, and just <laughs> put that in a museum in front of a bunch of fucking dumb jabroni marks who were like Ray Skywalker, just drink it in, you fucking that, neckbeards. When, drink it fucking in. When that guy said that, I was like, what are they gonna do with this salt that like makes that line? a thing and yeah. I was like oh they're just making fun of the fans yeah and I, I don't know if that was actually why but that's how I'm taking it because it's like that's right motherfucker well, there was no she's just a person because you don't have to be a Skywalker to be important because that fucking kid at the end normally I hate children but mm -hmm. that kid at the end when he used the force to grab the broom and then he looks at the horizon just like Luke did it shows 
It doesn't matter where, it doesn't matter who, the Force lives on and it's in people. That's what I really needed in The Force Awakens. Yes! I was so fucking pissed in The Force Awakens how, was, how all these people were connected somehow to Luke and uh, all these characters in the original trilogy. And I was like, oh, geez. And, uh, yeah, it doesn't have to be Star Rey Wars is, babies. And I was Make like, your dreams oh, come true. no, this is so dumb. The Force Awakens should be like... It, ev like, Anyone can be it. Like, yeah, like it, it's literally like a force of nature that binds the universe together. It's in all of us. Like some are just more attuned to it, and this movie got it right. I know that's that. What's what really got me? Because I was so pissed in Force Awakens that like, like why can uh, Finn have force powers or some shit? Like, not saying that he yeah. should, but like that would. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, like, like the fact that, like, basically in Force Awakens, they were like, oh, oh, how is Rey related to everybody? You don't know who her parents are. And it's like, oh, my fucking God, it's already just this orgy of convenience. Can we just have someone be their own person? And this movie said, fuck yeah, Rey is cool again because she actually has something on her own that she earned and that she learned through growth and experience. Not just, oh, I'm Luke's granddaughter, or I'm fucking Kylo's twin. That's like, what I really needed out of mm -hmm. this. Like, this was such a breath of fresh air that it's not just gonna do the same Star Wars we've seen over and over again, that it's really gonna tell its own story, but it, it understands and respects the universe and material enough. Okay. Yeah. Steve, any, uh... I, I was going to say, uh, not that I, I'm i hoping that in this 36 minutes of us talking that I've changed your mind on this movie. No. But I, do you at least see why no, I, I love I, it? I understand. And, and again, for the most part, I kind of agree. All the stuff you're saying is good. I agree is good. But there was so much stuff that, you know, you could have just cut out and it would have it would have made it so much better. Um Steve, you're telling me you didn't nut super hard during that scene where Kylo and Rey fought the fucking Snoke guards? That's, that was a good fight scene. Though. I mean, it, w it was. And unlike, unlike, you know me, I hate jobbers. I hate jobber right. minions. These guys all had unique weapons and, like, were shown to be capable at enough, like, where three of them were fighting... Uh, Kylo and like three were fighting Rey where they were getting like bested so if they didn't have each other they would have lost like I thought that the fight was booked really well where it made both people look strong and showed the dependence of each other while also making the Snoke guards actually seem like a legitimate threat rather than just stormtroopers with batons or something you know mm -hmm. but so, so to mm, so I, I I understand what you're saying about okay. you, you don't need to be a Skywalker to be great Ray is just Ray, and that's it. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean just because she's like super force charged for whatever reason doesn't even need to be a reason. I, just, I, sh I wouldn't even say she's super force charged. She's just force. She's like, force sensitive. She's a jetty. She's, she's a jetty. She's a really good candidate to be a Jedi. <laughs> she's a jetty. <laughs> but she still hasn't had Jedi training, other than Luke being like, "Well, this is how the force works." And stay away from this hole. That's all Luke had. And, yeah, I was going to say. Uh, he was on Dagobah for all of five minutes. And Yoda never told him how to use a lightsaber. He, he was and like. you know what Obi-Wan taught him? Uh, here, I'm going to blindfold you and shoot you. Do your best. <laughs> but it's it's still more than Rey got. We, we got but, to see Rey, who was one we established, was already self-taught in self-defense on Jakku in the first film. And mm. on this one, we even saw her training with a lightsaber a bit at the Rock. I know we didn't get a Rocky IV montage, but it's enough to <laughs> show that like she was there for a long enough time where she changed her wardrobe and got new clothes. Mm -hmm. So like she probably did her own lightsaber training there for a bit on her own, you know? Ray uh, learned enough, like, on her own, like, like, reading between the lines, not really being specifically told. Also, during that fight with all the Snoke guards, 
Ray was fucking getting worked for a lot of it and was only fighting two guys while Kylo was taking on four. And, like, and could, it was clearly showing, like, she's the weaker one at this point, and she doesn't really have formal training. Like, she was getting snicked and stuff. Meanwhile, Kylo's choking a dude out and cranking his dick and biting a guy's nose off all at once. And they're like, oh, shit, this guy's tough. Let's go fight, go fight Ray over there. <laughs> so, in episode five, when Luke is like, look, my friends are in danger, I'm gonna go fight Vader now. And you understand? Yoda's like, don't do that. You're an idiot. And what happens? Luke gets his ass kicked. He loses a hand. He does. Ray doesn't get a comeuppance in this one. She doesn't... She doesn't... There's no reason for me to believe that she's capable of taking on these elite guards. Even even one of them should be able to say... "Ah." Counter counter argument. Um... Super boosted with emotions, which we know fuels Jedi super hard because she was ready to use red lightsaber and kill Snoke on the spot. So she was feeling the bloodlust. She was getting the force going. Uh, Two, those guys, as strong as they may be, they're no Jedi. So that gives Rey, like, let's say type advantage, like Pokemon. (laughs) Um, Also, she was getting Kylo's help the whole time, and I really think the comeuppance wasn't that she lost a fight or lost a hand. Thank God she didn't lose a hand. Uh, Fucking, (laughs) I thought the comeuppance was that she was like, yeah, Kyle's my boy. And he's like, nah, though, let's let's be evil together, though. And she's like, but no, I was right. He's like, nah, though, come on. We got cookies on the dark side. It's dope. (laughs) And she's like, that meme is so old. He's like, high ground. And she's like, no. And he's like, why you no join dark side? She's like, stop doing old memes, Kyla. (laughs) But like, um... Yeah, man. No, I, I I get that though. Like, there should have been a little more yeah. consequence for Ray skipping her training. Yes. Because honestly, I Luke said there'd be three lessons, and I only remember two. <laughs> uh, I remember sitting on the rock. There was. And um and uh. Ah, uh, fuck no. Uh, and then there was the other one where he was uh, teaching tr- her. Uh, and the tree. Oh, uh, where he was sitting and telling about how. They, the Jedi hubris thing. Yeah, about how Jedis are fucking assholes. Uh, and then I think he was going to teach her... The, the, he didn't get to the third part because... Because she left. Because uh, she was uh, oh. jerking uh, More. Ren, Ren off yeah, in, she's the, jer- in the hot. And he's like, not in my village! Yeah, d- don't you kiss in my house, young lady! <laughs> <laughs> your uh, baby your- siblings were not going to tell you, but... Uh, but not, you're not! not. Yeah! Yeah! Woo! For up tax. <laughs> so, fucking, here's another thing that I'm so glad they didn't do that I thought they were going to do because bad writing. Uh-huh. When they showed the X-Wing in the water, I'm like, I swear to God, if she lifts the X-Wing out of the lake, I'm going to hang myself. Right. I... And then they're like, no, that was that was great because it showed that Luke brought that X-Wing there and buried it in the water. So it's inusable even if he lifted it out because he had every intention of staying there and dying. Oh, also just a I, cute, cutie, I, cutie Easter egg. I'm sorry to interrupt you, okay. but cutie Easter egg. When Luke goes to R2, he's like, hey, watch your language. That's a callback to the original script of Star Wars. R2-D2 spoke English and cursed a lot, like a sailor. <laughs> so, like, it's funny to think that he still speaks like how they wanted him to. We just can't understand him. That's I, funny. I guess now that you mention it, I do realize the, the X-Wing sitting in the water is a good metaphor for Luke himself because his Jedi training started with lift the X-Wing out of the water Mm -hmm. and now now it's back in the water. Yeah. Like, there's fucking layers, man. And honestly, Mark Hamill just fucking cranks my heart with this film. It's beautiful. And they're giving the guy who wrote and directed this his own trilogy that has nothing to do with, like, Mm -hmm. the main Star Wars characters. So I'm really excited to see what he does with it when he's not forced... To, to fucking include, like, everyone's favorite uh, toys so he doesn't fuck with someone's childhood or mm. hurt a fucking kid's feelings that his fanfic didn't come true, you know? That actually makes me excited. Yeah. Yeah. But they're not getting him for the next movie, and I'm sure a lot of fucking capuchin hacking fuckers are happy because uh, they didn't like this movie, apparently. We have J.J. Abrams again? Yeah, but they got and... fucking Jar Jar Abrams back okay, to fucking I'm, bring I'm... Ewoks back! I just Googled, um... <laughs> Episode 9 to see who what is about screenwriting Craig? it. <laughs> That's the subtitle. Episode and, 9, What About Craig? And uh, the screenplay is being written by J.J. Abrams and this guy named Chris Terrio, okay. who has written 
wait for it. Uh, Batman v Superman, Dawn of Justice. No! Justice League. So. <laughs> uh, he also wrote Argo. Which okay. Is, uh, now, Argo's, a good movie. Argo's great. So but here, then there's Batman v Superman. Here's the thing. So, time is a flat circle and it repeats itself. Um, we literally got a remake of New Hope for the first one of the new trilogy. Then we got a sequel, which is much darker than everything else and directed by a different person than the first one and the third one. And the third one's gonna be shit. Just like the original trilogy. Empire but, shit but the original and you can't trilogy, tell me that But that was directed by a third person. I know, I found out recently too that wasn't Lucas. But mm. you're telling me that his his producing of that one was, Oh yeah, his fingerprints uh, are all over Yeah, it. like, he's, He's like, oh, we can't have Ewoks. Uh, I mean, we can't have Wookiees. Just make them small. Make them little Yetis. Make them little boys. What did you say about time? It's a flat circle? It's a flat circle. It repeats itself. We'll watch True Detective Season 1. Well, don't, Matthew McConaughey. Uh, don't spoil it. So what you're it's just saying, that thing Matthew McConaughey <laughs> talks about. So what you're saying is that life is like a pizza? Yes, life is like a pizza. Good night, everybody. Good night, everybody.